Okay, so I'm just going to show you what I was doing with that. So I'm just uh, putting up here a finished business plan. So I just walk through one student's work so you can kind of see what you expect it to do. Um, so first off, you'll be trying to, this is all trying to get you prepared for your own portfolio. So it's, um, this portfolio plan is part of the portfolio assessment. So there's two parts to it. Part one is the plan and part two is the actual portfolio. And then part two also has an evaluation, which involves you presenting it to industry and getting some feedback. Um, and recording what that feedback is. So that will take place at the end of the semester. Um, we'll have a showcase. Um, it may end up being physical, we're not quite sure yet. I'm still talking to Glenn about that. But the audience is the first thing you want to think about and what they mean by that is what area of design industry that you've found out about um, are you interested in working in? So you've covered a wide range of things at TAFE from publication design, web design, um, UX design, um, motion graphics, um, illustration. So there's so many different fields. Um, and you can see this particular student has looked at um, the hospitality industry. She's kind of interested in looking at freelance work for that area of industry. Um, so that's her sort of approach to it. She hasn't, she sort of said she'd be doing content creation, so that could be quite a bit of social media stuff. Branding and visual identity, content creation, packaging, design, layout, publication, design. She doesn't mention illustration, so presume, presumably illustrations are not really something she's looking to push. Uh, she hasn't mentioned phot photography or imaging stuff much. So you can see she's chosen a particular direction or a couple of areas that interest her more than others. So that's what you're after is in this proposal saying, okay, I think these are the areas of industry I'm most interested in. Um, and that's going to, of course, feed into you deciding, oh, I better make sure I've got some of those things that would appeal to those jobs, um, to those employers, some of that work in my portfolio. So, you know, she's even got an idea there about because she wants to appeal to the hospitality industry, even formatting her resume like a menu. Talking about her social media profile, um, that's quite important to uh, particularly the hospitality industry, obviously a strong social media presence. Um, then the next thing it asks you to do is um, look for some ideal jobs. And so, again, you're looking at actual um, real real jobs. So again, if they're really long uh, job descriptions, just focus on the responsibilities and the keys, skills that they're after, because that's what you're trying to um, understand is what, what jobs are out there right now and what kind of skills do you need for those jobs. So you, it would help you identify things that you're really strong in and you want to have more of those in your portfolio and maybe identify also areas where you might be a bit weak. So aesthetics is the next thing which is super important um, and that's where you're going to be playing around with your brand um, and she's talked about neutral tones with a modern touch, um, blah blah blah, but at least get a few words in there so that when you're talking to me you can say things like, oh I want my portfolio to feel um, fun and expressive and joyous and exuberant. Okay, that's going to lead to a very different set of um, colours to the ones this student's choosing, which are sim simplicity and she wants neutral tones that feel quite modern and sort of spare. So that's that's quite a different approach. So that aesthetic thing, even if you, can, even if you don't, you know, get manage to put out whole sentences, just key words, you know. I, I want it to be what? cutting edge and really lean and um, really spare and, um, and minimalistic, okay, that's, that's a whole design direction and a whole set of colours. Hopefully you've already made some of those decisions when you started out with your brand. So you, you already have a set of colours and a design direction and everything really should follow from those decisions. So hopefully this is not a completely new direction. Because if it is, it probably means you've got to go back and re-look at your, 
your um, logo design and your business card design that you've already done. Hopefully you've already got a pretty strong idea about whether you're going for fun and exuberant or minimalistic or very structural or um, really um, uh, fluid might be another word it could describe you know designs that have a lot more curves and so on so then she's talked about promotional items so um, this doubles up a bit you know you may already have answered is this in the business plan if you've got an answer in the business plan that's very you know you're quite happy with you might even just put it across in here she's added some other things like thinking about um, a subscription through her website um, email direct, uh, direct emails to um, EDMs to promote recent work and she's got a strategy of offering freebies and wallpapers to create more exposure so you know that might lead you to, to think about having more of a, a shop kind of style with your with your um, portfolio website so there's all sorts of ways you could interpret that um, obviously business cards you have already been asked to do that and um, they're incredibly useful if you do end up even without planning you end up talking to someone even in a social situation and you know they find out you're a designer and they're interested well there you've got your card ready to go so the uh, the humble business card is still a very important item to get printed so that may still be one of the pieces you've got um, you might have other pieces that you've looked at and then we start to ask you for examples so this is the really important part is not not just stating what you're thinking about doing but actually researching examples of the kind of things you would send out so she's got some examples of EDMs um, you might have inspiring business card designs in there um, but this is this is the useful stuff in terms of you know think of the think of the portfolio plan is really where you establish a bit of a mood board for your portfolio. So um, you already kind of did that with your um, this, your um, logo design. So you might already have some imagery that you think is really influential. And if so, you know put it under that aesthetics. So you know this, she hasn't got a mood board, but if you have, put it under that aesthetic one because it's all about keeping you on track and then when I give you feedback we can both look back at what you said was your aesthetic direction and also who you thought it would appeal to and the kind of jobs you're going to apply to and then I can give you feedback and other people can give you feedback about whether what you're doing is actually meeting that uh, is that actually what you've done with your design work Okay, so examples, really important. Examples of promotional items that you think would be really good to produce um, stylistically. And then we're going to go into looking at specific items you are going to print. So you can see she's got a, a bit of an idea, a quote from um, Moo for the business card printing. Um, Moo are quite good, they're at the more expensive end. But again, a little bit of research and actually getting some prices. These we will get, we can look at this together in class next week, we'll look at the blurb book side again and you can start really honing in on which, which kind of options you're going to choose and how much they're going to cost. That is one of the, if you decide to go with blurb books, that's one of the advantages is that you can actually see what you're up for. You can choose the printing stock and the number of pages and you can get a really close idea of what you're actually going to spend. But the same with your business card. If you're going to actually get that printed, which you should at some stage, um, then a bit of a price on what the actual cost would be. So um, digital items and getting into that, what digital items you're going to produce. So she's gone and looked at um, uh, Squarespace. She's looked at so, uh, Instagram and got costs for the Squarespace. So there are things to consider here that you should include in your research. So if you do choose Squarespace for your portfolio or WordPress, just include any information, um, one about you know, the cost of a domain name. Um, and the same for Wix though, um, if you're going to actually professionalise the site and give it your own domain name, how much would that actually cost? And do a bit of research on that. 
and what's the monthly cost going to be going forward. So um, with Squarespace you'll also find um, you, you're going to have to have some consideration as to how people access it and if you are really going to maintain that cost. So if you build it just for the TAFE assignment and you don't maintain it, then that's maybe one of the disadvantages. It'll just disappear. So are you prepared to pay that monthly subscription or yearly, whatever it is, and what is it? Now there's some examples of portfolio websites. So obviously trying to set up um, some stylistic preferences is important. Um, things like if you've said you're going to do Instagram profiles, having a, having a good look at what other people's look like and looking at examples that you like. Um, then looking in more detail at some layout ideas, so ideas about how you might put things together. So for this one, you will actually already start working in InDesign. So you can do some sample layout ideas and you can just do screenshots to add it to the portfolio plan. So we're going to get into InDesign and start doing some sample layouts pretty quickly in the next couple of weeks so that you're really working out your design ideas for both the website and you know some little mock-ups for your ideas for the portfolio that will be printed and the portfolio website. Uh, then down here it has a copyright statement so you need to actually write the copyright statement that you're planning to put on your website and so you can see she's written one here so she, for the portfolio book um, she's going to use the same statement and the copyright symbol and she said all media that isn't my own will be referenced um, in this book will mean having a reference page so she's planning to put a reference page in at the back of the book uh, rather than credit under each one and that's that's kind of it I'll open the that's just that for that example. I'll just open the actual file. So it's an InDesign file. I'll just zoom up so you can see the actual questions. Oh, I'm so zoomed in, I can't see what I'm doing. But okay. Just hang in there. Okay, so let's just have a good look at this. So it's an InDesign document. And you're just going to go through it and lay it out like I showed you. So the order of questions is a little bit different to the one you saw. So you'll follow this one, not the example. But the first thing it asks for is five examples of um, emerging, so really current portfolio formats. So Behance is a good place to go for those, uh, but you just you know do a bit of general Google research. So um, we're really looking for some good examples that are inspiring to you. Um, then again, we've got presentation options. So this is more in terms of the actual way they've put. You know, we want examples of three to five examples of a typical piece of work and what they might have written with it, how they've actually laid it out. So going for three or, or three to five actual examples of individual design work um, rather than the overall sort of look at it. And then um, the audience, so that's the same. Aesthetics, that's the same. That's where you could put in a mood board. And then it asks for the job ads, examples of promotional items, and he's just talking about what kind of keywords you want to use to describe your your portfolio. There's just some, you know, some ways of thinking about it. Um, you know, is it going to be playful? Sorry, I deleted something. Is it going to be out there? Is it going to be quirky? What words will you, you know, describe your work with? So just thinking about what um, colours and shapes in the aesthetics. The best thing really here would be to put a mood board together to actually try to work out your ideas visually. 
Then it's just the same stuff about specific specifications of print, um, costs for portfolio items, business cards and anything else, and screenshots of other promotional um, cards and things that you, you think are, are good. So it's only um, so the red the red bits are the questions that you've got to answer, obviously. So again, on the next part, instead of print, we're looking at the same kind of questions but on digital. So go and have a look at examples of at least five different examples of um, website designs for portfolios that you like, and so. Um, examples of page layouts, go into quite a bit of detail here because it's going to help you with how to, what kind of, you know, how, how many words will I put with each piece of work. The budget like we saw before and so this is all pretty much the same. Um, this thing, you do have to um, answer this. So this is a little reflection. So this is um, thinking about how your design choices are going to help your career goals. So that's where you have to research this, the three job ads. So the, the sort of order of things is slightly different on our updated version to the sample I showed you. But you do need to say why, why your um, aesthetic approach is actually going to help you get work in the field you've outlined. So, and what particular companies are you going to approach? So, and then um, again, examples, a couple more examples of your strongest influences, visual, visual examples that are, have really ended up being the things that you're most interested in. So any kind of brainstorming you do, ideas and everything, just throw it into the business plan under here. Um, and anything you see in, um, in terms of your research, so profiles on social media such as Instagram, profiles on, on Behance or other places, do screenshots of ones that you think are really going to help you with your ideas. And then the last thing there is the copyright um, statement that you're going to put on your website and your portfolio. And then down here are your examples of once you start working, just screenshots of your first go at layouts and in there you would have to show some layouts of, a, of at least one particular job showing how you're actually going to work with the text and the image. So that's about that. Um, so we'll cover, you know, you probably have questions in class next week about it. That's fine as you start to work through it. But this is just a general overview. And I just want to flip here to, uh, you know, an example, which I think I did show you before. Um, okay. Full screen, let's just jump in. So when I'm talking about examples of a layout, you know, you've got to, got to, you can see that this student's used, used curves. It's quite difficult to do actually. Um, but in those samples, we want to see a typical layout, um, giving us an idea how you're going to use your branding and what the big thing you'll have to work out is what are you going to call each thing? Are you going to say brief or project and then what kind of summary information you'd have? Then you'd have something about the concept and then something <coughs> about the process or you might call that technical skills. So we'll look at more examples of that. But you can see once you've got it set up, and you can, and you can double up on the way you lay this out, you can double up with the website and you'll already have the text in your print version and you can just bring that straight into the website. So you won't have to keep rewriting things once you work it out um, for each job and you have a, a template in InDesign where we'll create this text and you'll just reuse that and but change it for the individual job. So that's just to give you an idea of um, one student's way of working with it. Um, and as long as you, you're sort of um, consistent about the way you outline the topics, it'll all kind of make it unified. So just escape out of that. Is it fair to 
Yeah, but I'll show you other examples that have less. So that's one of the things you're going to, um, you know, you know, you're going to kind of work out is, is you know, we'll do we'll do test layouts because you want to see well what, how much text do I want to put on each page? There's not a mandatory amount, but there does mean to be um, to be examples. I'll just put a couple more. Um, that's the plan, just some actual portfolios I've got here. Oh, here it is, this one, sorry. I'll just show you a couple more. Okay, I'll just show you this one, maybe this one's quite, it's a bit of an older one, but it's interesting, you know, she's got the brief, the design concept and then technical skills, so that could be another way of approaching it, and look, I will point out that these mock-ups, these aren't terrific, and you can see the heavy shadow there, that's the kind of thing we're going to look at, and that's also why I'd encourage you to source mock-ups that other people don't have and maybe even say with the packaging one maybe even paying for a better one so that you don't have the same mock-ups as every everybody else so um yeah so if you're all using the same mock-ups from the tafe one that's a good starting point but you may find you want to go and find and pay for it some better ones for the print portfolio they would have to be high resolution ones um, so that, that's another example of a portfolio. Um, show you a couple more. Um, I think this one was a lay flat. So I'll just go view uh, full screen mode. I'll just have a look at this one quickly. And then I'll go back to just showing you where all the resources are. So she's taken a different approach, this student, where she's kind of used design. I think this is quite interesting. She's given herself an excuse to show off her typographic skills by using some design quotes to break up sections. She's included a bit of an about me. A lot of students wouldn't do that. She's got a little bit of an adapted version of her resume even in there, which you could do in your print portfolio, portfolio. You definitely have to do that on the website. You do have to include your resume and you will have to have some about me um, like this for the website. So, and a photograph of yourself in black and white. We'll ask you for that. However, you won't necessarily want to include it in the printed version. That would be up to you. She's given herself quite a generous um, contents page as well and again what she's doing is trying to show off her typographic skills so she's again she's given herself room to play with the contents that's an excuse to show off hey look I've got type typographic hierarchy really under control here um, and then you know really nice section headings applying her branding um, this is how she's chosen to she's got right, a much more yeah, this is the actual print, went to print, it was a lay flat, so you can see she's designed, I can't put them together, sorry, to show you, but they really are, I've probably got some photos of it I can show you, but yeah, she's gone right across the lay flat it's page. It's really spaced out with the brief at the start and then space. Yeah, well, you know, depending on your approach, I mean, I'll show you, you know, we'll go back and look at some other ones, they're much more sort of, yeah. you know, um, quite different, but that's why it's good to look at a range of how other people are doing it. Go on Bay Hearts. What's a, what's a lay flat? So the, the page is completely lie flat. You don't have this perfect binding. I'm going to try and get one printed out, an example. Um, Glenn's agreed to it and then you'll be able to see an example. See how it's, yeah, that's typical perfect binding. Mm -hmm. So you always have to allow for that bounce in the middle and the thicker the book, the more you kind of lose in it. But we'll talk more about that. Um, and you can see for each job she's done a branding. So it's, not, it's not bound together, is what you're saying? Yeah, it's, it's glued actually. It's, you probably know about this, so it lays completely flat. 
It doesn't have the perfect binding going in like that. It's actually glued. It's like a card stop they use. So you may or may not like that. So I'm hoping to get an example to show you. The advantage of it is you can really be generous with the spacing. But you can see she set up a branding guide for each job and a typographic job. Why? Because in her, her strategy, she was really trying to promote her branding and, and she listed companies, you know, to apply for jobs with that are all about branding. So, you know, th that's why you've got to work out a little bit who you want to be talking to in terms of who the portfolio is kind of aimed at. So, you know, very large, kind of generous space given to each one. Um, kind of signature images rather than lots of images. That's been her approach. Um, everything's quite minimal. And that's that really, you know, you can see in her actual design work, that's also kind of coming through. And then there's an example of using a mock-up. So she didn't actually make this. This is a, this is a mock-up. So thinking about how you want to further what you've done by getting some really good quality mock-ups. And again, nice typographic design. You know, that's what she's really showcasing without, you know, um, this is, think of it as a book design. That's what you're doing here. It's a book design. So there's a lot of opportunity to work with it and work with your type, especially if that's something you feel is a strength. So she hasn't just copied the brief. No. 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 You really, you really don't. Well, that's not a good job. Those, those I, should, I don't think that should have been in there. But look, I would avoid things like this. There's so little of her work in that. It's just like, what is this? What did she do? Well, it's yeah, exactly. It's an existing brand. Um, they had to do an advertising poster. I don't think that job's around anymore. Yeah. I always disagree with it because I think, well, well I wouldn't have. I told her not to put it in there, but she did. But what are you actually showing? It's someone else's logo. You just saw some imagery. and So don't put stuff like that. It's just really clearly, the majority of it's not your work. And especially if you're trying to sell yourself as a your strength as branding. Then, okay, so it shows you can work with someone else's brand, I suppose. But you only have a certain number of pages here. I think put your work in it um, rather than showing how you work with someone else's brand. Okay? So and that, that, that could happen with the, um, uh, with some of the jobs you might have, you know, the freelance stuff, sometimes people have been asked to reimagine another um, designer's work, redesign it, and they haven't been able to straight, they're not a, it's not a great freelance work to put in in that case. Mm -hmm. Try to put in one where you have had some creative free like range. watch when we had to do the watch and then we had to like create a magazine ad. Yeah. But like we did actually, like, I guess if you just look at it, it would be the same. It's just a watch brand that we yeah. put on. Well, I mean, in that case, you are showing the illustration in the yeah. context. Yeah. I don't disagree with that, but just make so, so sure. She didn't draw the can. The red bull can wasn't, like, illustrated. Yeah, exactly. So so just make sure you're showcasing your, your brand, you know. Mm. <coughs> Sorry. So with things like the NASCLEAR ad, if you're doing an ad for it, please keep track of the imagery from Unsplash or over so that in the portfolio you can put your little credit at the bottom which says image source from Unsplash, you know, or the name of the creator if you've got it, um, so that you, you know, you, you demonstrate again that you're responsible with copyright. Okay, so, you know, this is just a good example, you know, she's just, she's re reworded the brief in a way that sort of makes sense to her and then, you know, but her whole thing has been giving everything lots of space and title designs and you can see that's got a very different look and feel to other portfolios we can look at. So that was, I think, one of, I think that would have been the website one. So again, sort of. You know, then illustration, she's just put that in. It's not, actually, that's not a great illustration. I wouldn't have put that in. I actually don't think that. If you're saying you're concentrating on branding, then if the watch is fabulous and the car is fabulous, yes, that we'll put it into an advertising context to show it.
But if it's just ordinary, I think that's ordinary. Is it? Well, yeah, it's fairly ordinary. It's not showing the level of skill I've seen in some of the other ones. So if it's, if it's not amazing, but the poster's not bad. So she's done some good work with the poster. So then maybe that's why it ended up in there. But in this case, I would have focused on the poster because I think just having the poster would have showcased her skill quite, you know, in a better way. And maybe working a little bit more with some type on the poster. It's not much on there. Uh, she's done a great illustration for DG Magazine. So she's just put the illustration in there. And then next to it, she's done a, found a mock-up of it. That's a very generic mock-up. Also, that DG magazine, if you're working with the template with that black and white thing, take it off. <laughs> it's not the job. If you've got something weird that's come through with the brief and it was mandatory, there's no reason in your portfolio, nobody's measuring it against the brief now, what, what your, what your employ, potential employers are going to look at is the design by itself. They're not going to know that you had to put that stripy thing on Okay, so if there's something that you had, well, you think, well, I don't really need to comply with the brief anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to fiddle with this design and make it look better. And for several students that year, they had to put, I don't know, have you done this one? Yeah, Did you have to put that thing on? Yeah. Okay, consider taking it off if it improves your design. Remember that the people who are looking at it aren't going to judge you on the original, um, you know, they don't know you had to put that on. Yeah. Okay, they'll know about, yeah, obviously the DG magazine, for sure, that one. But, you know, you can totally redo that. Um, the magazine stack, I think um, that may be one of our ones. Again, if you don't want to have the same um, mock-ups as everybody else, consider looking for more original ones so that yours don't look the same as every, every single other designer out there. The other problem with the free ones you'll find out on places like Mockup Tree is that every other designer in the world is looking for them and using them. So if you're ever going to spend any money, I think, um, you know, bother to spend a little bit on a couple of these ones where you think, okay, maybe there's a better mock-up out there I can use. Then she's got a section on, on publication and typography. Now, every student is going to choose different areas. You won't all necessarily name them the same. Um, you may not want to section them. You may want, I'll show you some next week, uh, that are by the project instead of by the category. So you can choose to just have this project, then this project, then the next project, and then say that it included branding and the illustration and, you know, so say what it included in that. So you don't have to necessarily do it this way with sections. And you can see there's the copyright statement. Um, she probably should have put the copyright symbol and her name there as well. Um, she didn't state Yeah, exactly. Good, well pointed. There was no statement. There was no statement, and yet some of those things weren't, particularly the majority, watch one. It did look like the bus so, stop one she took that from. No, but half of them would have been from Unsplash. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. So that's where you've got to, you know, I'll be on your case about that. Um, How many projects do we have to put in? 10 to 12, oh, sorry, 12, 12 projects, around 12 to 12 projects. You can, you can do more. Um, yeah, it's more, okay. Yeah, you can do more. Well, obviously, you know, we have to have a minimum. Um, now, well, next week we might look at uh, another one, which is, I think I showed you four Trudy's. I'll see if I can find that and show you the actual photos of it. I think she did hers by the project, so I think it's worth... Thinking about different in your strategy, in your where it asks you in the portfolio plan about what your strategy is. Um, that's what we're talking about, like in your critical thinking. The answer you're going to put in there is going to be to do with those ideas. Like, will I put it together by the project? Is it more strategic to do it by sections and categories, like publication design? Because, hey, I know I want to go and put this portfolio in front of the publication designers, so I better have a section that clearly sh shows that kind of work that they can look at easily. Or do I just want to have projects? You know, there's nothing wrong with either way. Those are just decisions you'll have to make. Now, I just wanted to uh, point you in the direction of um, 
We'll look at this next week. This is where we already have the downloaded templates from InDesign. We can, so we can start mucking around that with them. We can try out some different sizes and just do screenshots of the final result of our playing around and that goes back into the portfolio plan where it says samples. Uh, we've got more example portfolios that you can look in there. Um, yeah, no, I'll put some more recent ones in there, I think. Um, we also have the um, portfolio suppliers. So in there, I think I showed you before, um, if you've got a, um, a big budget, the other place you could go is Jurgens. So Jurgens and Co is worth a look if you've got more money. I'll just get to the site. Jurgens and Co. They're a book binder. They're in Annandale. Um, I'm recording this, by the way. So, Thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Jurgens and Co. If you if you're feeling um, generous with money, um, you know they do have these amazing portfolios. And um, just go to the where is it? Uh, portfolios. You could have a look. And, you know, again, if you like something in here, you might screenshot it and have a look at these because they do do embossing and custom designs and they've got some gorgeous things, but they're going to be pricey. They're going to be, and they do boxes and all sorts of stuff, but it is worth having a look at their portfolio examples. And, you know, they can do things like this. They can do the embossing and, um, and you can have leather and you can have fabric and, you know, um, so have a look at the portfolio. That's right, right. Have a look at the portfolio gallery on that, because even if you don't use these guys, you just might find um, these might be interesting to you, just to see what people, other people are doing. Um, and there are often graphic designers, photographers. Just go and have a look. Um, you know, because they do do these custom covers as well. Which is just really interesting. And I think one of our students was did have one featured here a while back. Let's see if it's still on there. Could be. Just have a look through. Maybe not. But anyway, just you know, it's worth having a look. And again, if you see see things you really like, um, you know, some of those are architects, some of them are using folders. But they do do a student deal as well, so you could look into that. You could ring them, have a chat to them. Some of them have um, portfolio folders, but just go and have a look at what they've done. The finishes on these are really quite beautiful, but you are talking over the $300 mark, so you only want to do this if you've got a little bit of money. So there's a design portfolio, and they do these nice boxes. So definitely work, worth a look if you've got the, the budget for it. Don't do ring binders though. We don't want that. They've got proper bound ones they can offer you. Anyway, that's there. And so the link to there is in there. And this is all under the portfolio uh, resources. And there's some more sample um, ones there. And then we should have the... So I'll just go back a step. We should have the... Um, mock-up bundle in here as well. Just looking for it, not there. Okay, I was sure that was in here. Why, why don't we do it in a mini binder? Um, it's, it, well, it's just not as professional presentation. I, I, you know, we prefer something that's a little bit, unless it's really high end. Look, you could consider it, but you're going to have to convince me that it's going to look fantastic. So your average kind of um, ring binder printing is going to look really low key. Maybe Jurgens you could look at, but generally it just isn't industry standard the way they look and present. So sorry, I just thought the, that we had the mock-up bundle in here. Let me just check. I thought it was here. Mock-up bundle. There it is. Yeah, I guess you could take it down. Okay. That's correct. Um, rather than that, you could look into the um, any Canadian Post screws 
um, like there are companies that will use Canadian post screws. It's a really neat finish. It does the same thing, you can lift it out. So if you want to look into that, definitely there are companies that produce the folders. But I had trouble, we had one that did it, that Digital Print Australia. Um, but they've stopped doing it. And the reason why they've stopped, because I rang them and asked, the reason why they've stopped is that most people are going for things like this instead, because they're actually cheaper and the finish is really good. Um, but it, it is still a possibility. But you, the trouble we found was that you could get the post-it screws at the folder cover, but then you had to go and organise the printing of the covers and get them um, punched yourself. So you couldn't get it done all at one, whereas Digital Print Australia was offering this all-in-one service. And I haven't found another company that's doing that all-in-one. But by all means, if you, if you prefer that, the advantage of it is, as you say, you can unscrew them and you can replace the pages, you know, depending on who you're going to see. So that's definitely something you can research. So that all goes into the portfolio plan. Please let me know if you find a good place that's doing it. Because I just I haven't found one yet, but it changes all the time. So do the research, and if you find something you think is a goer, then of, you know we'll discuss it, and by all means price it and everything. And do you'll be able to do some comparisons. We'll look at pricing for blurred books next week, so you'll have a good idea what they cost, and then you can cost other systems and see if it kind of works out for you budget wise. Because sometimes those things where you have to go and print it separately ends up costing you more than something like this. You know? So definite, definitely an option if you can find a good one. Um, I'm really sad that the Digital Print Australia aren't doing it anymore because they, they did do a good product and it all came back totally done for you. You didn't have to agonise about organising the pages separately. They did the printing and the binding all together. So sad that they stopped doing it. Um, but yeah, so your mock-up bundle is sitting, just as the last thing I'll say this week, inside student resources, deployment graphic design, portfolio subjects, so straight in there, you've got the mock-up bundle, and if you go in and have a look, you can see what categories of things we've got. Um, these ones are just freebies from mock-up tree, I think. Um, we've got billboards, these are all TAFE owned. So you're free to use any of these. And if you go inside, you'll have to download the folders. But say with brochures, um, there's a lot. So you do actually have quite a lot of choice. Um, but part of what takes up a bit of time is you've got to sort of have a good look at them, download them and open them in Photoshop and, and see what's on offer. So I would definitely spend some time in here looking at what you've got for free because they are print resolution, they're 300 pixels per inch. So they were purchase ones, not, um, you know, not, not freebies. Anything like, like that one, that looks like it's probably a freebie one. Um, the rest of these are all part of the bundle. There's some good iPad, iPhone ones that are quite usable. Um, they're all um, from, you know, owned by TAFE and you you can so use it. Are, are you saying that we have to credit uh, well, these, no, these ones are supplied by TAFE. You, yeah, you can have them for free. Yeah, you, you know, if you're crediting these, you just go mock up supplied by TAFE. So, yeah, they're, they're fine. So, um, but what I'm saying is you might want to mix in with these. Um, some that you might f say, say you want to do showcase your brand on the side of a truck. There isn't a good truck. Okay, we don't have a mock up for that. Um, we don't have a proper packaging mock up. You know, and, but there are some great ones out there. And with your with your Moo, um, um, whatever it is, the drink brand you've done, what is that? What is it called? Alison's Kefir. Alison's Kefir. Well, you know, don't just all use the same mock-up for that. <laughs> you know, go and find some and try to differentiate yours out from everybody else's. So sometimes, that's what I'm saying, sometimes once you've had a good look at, you know, this is really a bit of research to have a look at what you can have for free from TAFE. So, so are the mock-ups uh, a bit too detailed? It's like the, the, the yep. actual design job you're not seeing. Yes, yes. Now that's a really important point. 
So um, again, it goes to your, um, you know, going and researching what you want, and you just download these, and then you know, once you download it, you can open the Photoshop file. Um, I won't do that now. Um, we'll do a bit more on that next week. But um, but you're quite right. That's one of the things you've got to be conscious of is not just accepting the mock-ups as they are. Sometimes you'll have to crop them because I have all this extra space around whatever it is. Um, try to avoid picking ones that have a lot of visual clutter. Sometimes they have coffee cups on a desktop. You just want a computer screen. You know, and what does the coffee cup do for your job? Nothing. It's just a, an object that distracts. Um, a couple of students who last year had ones with a lot of shadows overplaying it. Now, it just obscures your work. So there's a lot, a lot of research and time, um, which is why we're talking about this now before the holidays, because, you know, you want to get ahead of this and really have sorted out and have on, on hand some good mock-ups for your projects. So have a look at what you, can, what you like from this bunch, because they're all free and they, they are high quality. Um, but, you know, some of these even, I know some of these are ones that were used by students here, and some of them, again, they, they do have too much stuff or they've got heavy shadows. So I pointed out that one on, on the student work, it just had, they had a really heavy shadow. And one of the things to look out for with all these mock-ups is that shadows will print darker than you expect. So one of the things I'll get you to do is, if a mock-up has a shadow on it, just automatically go through and we'll, we'll actually get you all to soften those shadows. They are good, like they can really help the design pop and give it, you know, the 3D object, but, you know, we don't want it to overshadow the work, literally to overshadow it. Um, in fact, I think that one I was showing you is a good example of it. I don't know if it's still open. Let me see if it's still open. I don't know if I closed it. I might have closed it. Uh, yeah, this one. She had some mock-ups I was showing you. Look at that hideous shadow. You can't see. What's that? Her design is, Her so design is completely hidden. Pale. What is the point of that? What, what is it doing for her? You know, and these, even these, they're, they're okay, but again, they're a bit tiny. The design is not, you know, really being shown off. So there's a lot of that kind of thinking and work involved in putting the portfolio together. You are designing a book. Think of it that way. This is your opportunity to actually show what you can do on a fully printed piece. You know, um, it's a fully printed book, fully bound it's a nice finished piece. Whatever you do, you want it to look really professional. Um, whatever finish you choose, it's got to look, you know, whatever method you choose, it's got to look professional. And, you know, think about it. You know, what does that mock-up do for her job? What does this coffee cup do for her? Nothing. And look at the heavy, heavy shadow. Okay, so that's going to be part of your work in designing the portfolio, getting all the mock-ups together, and they're not just accepting what they give you. And often they'll come with a grey background. And, you know, they might have, um, see that's got the grey background. So again, like you don't have to accept those background colours. You can completely change the backgrounds on the mock-ups. Because they're Photoshop files, they'll have a background layer. Uh, and you'll be able to change that. You don't just accept them as they are. And you may want to actually look at the greys they've got and match them across various uh, mock-ups. So you're not jumping around and having a, a greenish gray background and then a bluish gray background and then a, um, a reddish gray background. So instead you control what that gray is, you know, so that whatever neutrality you want to, you're controlling it. That's too small to see the design. Yeah, look, 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 what is this actually doing? <laughs> you know, it's show this is the poster, I suppose. She's showing off the poster. Um, but, you know, there's an awful lot of grey space there. I don't know if that's helping. You know, is there a better way to show the magazine ad? Does it have to be a magazine ad? Could it be a poster? Could it be a billboard so you could just show the billboard closely? Billboard mock-ups are notorious. They often have wild street scenes behind them with heavy contrast images and, 
And in those cases, again, it's up to you to have a look at those mock-ups. And one of the techniques we can do is we can actually blur a background layer and we can desaturate it so it has no colour and only the actual colour of your work pops out in the billboard. So there's a couple of things like that, little tricks we can do with the mock-ups. The worst thing is to have a really colourful background then you put your colourful object in it and it's just lost in there. So you're wanting to show things like a billboard in situ but you don't want the background to be so distracting that the work is lost. So you actually work quite a bit in Photoshop to, to get these mock-ups working well. So um, step one is to actually have a look at what we've got for free for you and then think about, well, okay, um, I can't see any I like for a stack of magazines or I can't see any I like for the bottles. Maybe I, you know, maybe I need to go and actually look at something better and budget for it. So budget for some mock-ups, that's part of your portfolio plan. That's why we're having a session now. So that as you start to fill that plan in and you get to things where you've got to put prices in for your, your publishing, you also think about, well, maybe a bit of budget. How much does a really good high quality mock-up cost? You know, go and have a look and look at the quality and you don't have to go and run out and buy it right now, but thinking ahead to what you might need for the actual portfolio and collecting them. Giving yourself time to do that. Okay, so I'm going to stop now and